All right, good morning and welcome once again to your favorite show on TV. This is Cool TV, Channel 196 and Star Times. My name is Dr. Banjo. Welcome and good morning. It's a very beautiful, quiet Thursday morning, and I believe all Nigerians and especially Lagosians are going about their business as usual. Um, welcome to our studio in Lagos. This is Cool TV, and I have Vishama Gaine with me on the show. We'll be running the show together as usual. Vishama, good morning. Good morning and How welcome. are you doing today? Good, good, good. All right, we are not alone in the studio. We have a gentleman joining us, and we'll be talking about national issues. Um, he's no other person but this very, you know, gentleman. I, I was talking about him with someone uh, just a few minutes ago, and I said, hey, so he looks so gentle and he looks so handsome. <laughs> he's one of our legislators and is a member of the House of Representatives representing the Korudu Federal Constituency, uh, and that uh, brings only one person to mind. Let's quickly meet um, Baba Jimmy Johnson. Honorable, yes. good morning. Good morning. Uh, to good morning, Nigerians. <laughs> All right. We, we have a lot of business to do on the show. Crossfire is always, you know, you're not on the hot seat, but then we may bring we'll some try, hot. We'll try um, not to make uh, it yeah, but um, <laughs> maybe they should increase, <laughs> increase the AC in the studio so that. Uh, I mean, you don't lose your cool, you know. But definitely, we'll be taking you through um, a couple of um, questions, you know. Just, it's your opinion, and um, you're entitled to it, um, really and truly. Now, uh, the first story I, I want us to talk about, I mean, on, on business. I mean, the central bank has been, I mean, let me, let me talk about the banking industry in Nigeria has been through a lot of phases. I mean, there have been times when they have even had to get some, uh, intervention, you know, even from the federal government. And uh, the consolidation that have been done over time by one bank acquiring the other one just to help, uh, you know, consolidate on, on, on the activities of the banking industry in Nigeria. Let's take this story. CBN foreign currency policies is killing us. Uh, and now this was what the Lagos State uh, Chambers of Commerce and Industry says uh, the biggest challenge uh, they are facing or the investors in Nigeria are facing uh, you know, at the moment. Currently, this is the, you know, dislocation caused by the recent uh, foreign exchange policies of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Speaking at the 2015 third quarter press conference, uh, the president of the LCCI, Remy Bello, said the chamber uh, appreciate the challenge of scarcity of foreign exchange as uh, tough choices has to be made, uh, but that the chamber has serious reservations over the policy uh, choices of the CBN in managing the current crisis. He said the CBN should put in place policy that will encourage inflow of forex without necessarily, you know, you know, creating a tolerance for money laundering, adding that the chambers believe this can only be done through intelligence. Now, um, a lot of things have been affecting investors in Nigeria, and uh, the policies being made by the central bank, you know, affecting grossly the activities of the commercial banks who are responsible basically for churning out loans, you know, to investors and, and all of that. And then you will also agree with me that, um, you know, our foreign, uh, uh, Nigeria is not uh, contending very favorably at the moment with, you know, the benchmark of, um, um, you know, of the dollar. Now, but the point is that, let me ask you this question before we go into the story. Do you think Nigeria is dollarized? I believe Nigeria is dollarized and the intervention of the CBN governor um, I think is right because it's, it's, a, it's an interim measure. Oh, okay. So, I mean, but how do we really uh, get across all the bends that um, Nigeria being a dollarized country, um, you have foreign, I mean, you have experts who are coming into the country, we still pay them in, in foreign currency. You have foreign you, schools you in know, Nigeria. In Nigeria, you, you still pay foreign, foreign currencies, foreign you currency. know, and all of that. And that doesn't really show to me that we have a robust economy that can tolerate, you know, the up and down, the fluctuations in the value of uh, Naira, uh, you know, in comparison to the dollar? Very good question. Uh, I, I believe we're in a catch-22 situation. Uh, the first situation is one that you uh, rightly talked about, is the dwindling um, material reserves. Uh, we all know that the um, oil prices are um, going south. The, the price of the uh, oil in the market today, I think, is sub- it's about forty-two, forty-five dollars per barrel. Mm -hmm. A year ago, it was a hundred dollars. Uh, um, Nigeria's economy is um, import dependent, 
So in the midst of dwindling resources, uh, dwindling um, dollar resources, so um, the federal government thought it necessary, uh, the CBN, I mean, thought it necessary to preserve the forex we have. So they brought in interim measures. It's very critical to use the word interim. interim. Okay. You know, in order to ensure that those scarce resources, which is the forex or the dwindling forex reserves we have, are better utilized. Okay. Now, in the past, you would find out that a lot of people um, had access to buy dollars uh, in a very easy manner. All they do is they load their card and they go abroad and shop, 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 shop. You know, s such things also uh, negatively affects our manufacturing sector because uh, there is no demand for locally produced goods. We have this uh, insatiable uh, foreign appetite, you know, so Could I think- that be because of the standard? Yes, but again, the standards didn't just go optimum in a day. So mm -hmm. you also have to create the, the time and space for our local industries uh, to grow. Today, we are one of the leading exporters of cement, uh, the Dangote Cement Factory. It was because of policies like this. You know, we went through pains initially. And now we're exporting um, cement. And Dangote cement is all over the place. And I'm sure a lot of countries are falling over to have him come and invest in them. I recently read that he uh, started a plant in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so I think we should. And again, I also ask the question that the CBN interim measures, have we seen results? I will say yes, because our foreign reserves have shot up immediately, and frivolous demands for forex are, are drastically reduced. Um, you talked about school fees and coal. I believe there's a Form A that people can, that people really can go to the bank yeah. and present legitimate documents and, and um, um, open LCs to expatriate money to, to, their, to, their, to their foreign schools or pay their foreign mortgage or go for medical uh, treatment. So, it is not true that the federal government, the CBN, has totally banned um, access to, to forex. They've just limited it. Okay, but a lot of Nigerians will still disagree on your opinion that uh, the interim measures by the CBN are effective to a large extent because Nigerians, the average Nigerian, they, they buy, they, they do business. And at the end of the day, the value of the Naira is still not you know, strong. It's still not supporting the businesses. So Nigerians are wondering, if, if the CBN they're doing all of this to make the economy stable, why aren't we seeing the results? Thank you for that question. The critical point is that if the CBN doesn't do this, I believe the other option that is open to them is to devalue the Naira. And that makes and, importation yeah. more difficult. difficult. You know, you have to break an omelette to make an egg. So they have to take some. And critical. Nigeria being, uh, you know, a very grossly um, described as, as an mm -hmm. ex exporting nation. Uh, exporting or importing? I mean, importing Imports. nation, yes. sorry. Yeah. Um, makes it, that really very difficult. Yes, yeah, so it's extremely yeah. difficult. So yeah. I, my, my message to Nigeria is that I'm sure that this government is listening to them. They feel their pains, and in the fullness of time, um, appropriate um, policies will come in place that will make uh, Nigeria happy and importers happy. Because we thought the phone lights start buzzing. Now, you said at the fullness of time. I'm very sure some of our viewers will be wondering how long. Should we wait for the next four years? The next, since we're still waiting for ministers for us no, to have a minister. Since we cannot evaluate the president, since we can't evaluate the president, you know, in his hundred days in office, I mean, <laughs> so we have to wait for four years. No, we, what do you mean you can't wait? evaluate the president in his hundred days in office? Yeah, the president. You, I, I think APC as a party, uh, we and that happens to be your party also. Don't uh, believe in the ideology of celebrating hundred days in office. I, I know how very vehemently. And, um, you know, very um, outspokenly that uh, a lot of uh, party chieftains have come out to discredit 
all documents that have been saying a lot of things about the 100 days of President Muhammad Buhari in office. And um, I mean, everything is pointing to the fact that, uh, I mean, the party, including the presidency, uh, and that's when I say the presidency, I simply means whether it's uh, the president that is saying it or some things have been said on his behalf, do not feel that it is appropriate for the president to be evaluated, you know, based on the 100 days in office. You know, whatever you think he has achieved or has not achieved, that is just not, you know, what evaluating the activities of uh, President Muhammad Buhari in 100 days. I don't believe the party doesn't want people to evaluate the president, but I, I believe we, what the issue is, is with the 100 days. The president is working and he works quietly. You can see that, uh, you can see a lot of positives already. You can see that the body language abhors corruption. You can see that he's uh, de declared his assets. You can see that the foreign uh, reserves are swelling up. You can see promises from NMPC that Nigeria will soon be self-sufficient in petroleum products. You can see um, that the security situation, situation is, is, is improving. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that Lagos State is in the center and there's a synergy between Lagos and the federal government of Nigeria. Why I say Lagos State is that if Lagos sneezes, Nigeria would catch cold. Um, you can see that he's, he's looking towards policy that would also create employment for uh, uh, teaming um, youths. Uh, they, they say that the demographic in Nigeria shows that 70% of uh, Nigerians are, are youth. So I believe he's taking the right steps and he will be evaluated in uh, pretty soon. I think 100 days is Okay, uh, to, we, we, to, we, we to may need to just uh, move on here. Now, uh, a lot of people, you know, watching us may be wondering, okay, I mean, aside from the fact that um, we have introduced you as, um, as a legislator, a member of the House of Representatives, and uh, we have also told, as many people who are watching us, you represent, you know, the Korudu Federal Constituency. But as a matter of fact, I want us to quickly take a look at a, a very um, interesting background. I mean... Somebody told me before we came into the studio, he's such a gentleman, what is he doing in politics? Why, why are you in politics? I mean, I, does that mean politics in Nigeria is not made for gentlemen? I mean, why, in the first instance, why and how did you get into politics? Um, my great uncle, um, Otuba Tewes uh, Benson, Benson, was the first minister of um, information. information and broadcasting in Nigeria. And my father was probably one of the closest people to him. So I was born into politics. I always say to some of my friends that at my early age, I met um, Awolowo, I met the great Zeke of Africa, hmm. and many of those political titans of the days of yore. So also, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer. No, no, then um, in school, funny enough. Um, you love government. I love government, yes. <laughs> I got an A1 in government. Fantastic. Then I studied law, you know, and if you look at most successful politicians are, are lawyers, you know, mm -hmm. look at um, our law. Well, that, that, that um, simply means that is extending Obama. very seriously to barrister. Yes. Uh, <laughs> she's, a, she's a gentleman at the bar, too. <laughs> uh, look at Awolowo, look at Obama, look at, name it, uh, a lot of the that's, that's correct. good politicians. Yeah, are, no, I, I, I read right. about Otumbati West Benson's anti-incidents when it comes to politics in Nigeria. And I remembered I mean, an account that says, okay, as at that time we have the Yorubas, the Igbos, the Aousas. Um, when he contested, you know, under the Ikorudu constituency back in the day, he, I mean, people voted him Emmas at a particular point in time, not even minding that he's actually Party. from a Yoruba race. So I, I think to a very large extent, he's created a, a very good uh, platform for the Bensons to, to letting people know that politics transcend, you know, clans and creed and tribes and tongues, and that, I mean, we can have a very fair uh, and free environment when it comes to electing oh. people into office. Now, no, um, no, 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 no. Yeah. on that note, now I want to ask you a question. Okay. Based on, on, on some of the, the things you mentioned, now, politics should be all-inclusive. I mean, all-inclusive in the sense that we should have a balance, those from wealthy backgrounds and those from 
humble backgrounds. But over time, we've seen in Nigeria that it's probably those from the wealthy backgrounds that have access to be known in politics. While those who want to go into politics, but from the very humble backgrounds, they do not have the funds to, to throw about, you know, to help project their political career. Do you think money politics is still so strong in Nigeria that those from humble backgrounds cannot you know, have access to such positions to also contribute their own quota? Yes, I must say that the introduction of the PBC in the Nigerian political space has been a game changer. Um, the last um, elections we had in our great party, the APC, uh, the primaries, which is um, a way whereby candidates emerge, mm -hmm. uh, had to do with how many mileage or how a nimble and robust the candidate's um, strategy is. I would say that I didn't win the party election based on my name. Okay. I, worked, I, I, I won the party primary because I worked very hard. But I that still tirelessly. needed money. You needed I worked money to do that to work. Yes, again, yeah, that is what we, we should also um, sort of introduce into politics. You must have achieved something you must have a network, you know, because okay. I believe in the philosophy that um, um, success is a collection of relationships. Sure. So if you have a lot of relationships and you've been good to people, you should be able to tap into that. You know, you could have relationships in different areas or different um, 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 spread. So yeah, if you can I, tap into that. Yeah, I read one of your reports some time ago, and um, you were emphasizing about building relationships. And um, I think your words were like, my sojourn at the LSDPC gave me an opportunity to actually meet a lot of people. That's right. And that really formed, you know, your, your network. Of, That's right. Uh, and, you know, as, we, as the saying goes today, that your network is actually a function of your net worth. That's right. So how strong your network is determines what you're, you what you're worth eventually yeah, you and all of that. Now, uh, because of the peculiarity of, uh, of the show today, I think it's just high time we begin to flow into talking about, you know, you as a member of the House of Representatives. And uh, we can, uh, while we still, you know, talk about issues that, that borders around politics in Nigeria, we may need to start getting narrowing down to your constituency and some of the work that you have done. Okay. This Today's show is to help all legislators out there that you can actually be a part of our country because what we have seen you know, over time has been people that we voted in as representatives and they go out there and that's the last time you see them. But I've seen a couple of things and we'll be bringing a couple of reports you know, that we'll be talking about. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.